So our OS3100 sensor here, it's got an, an additional column of relative temperature. So when we created that sensor, we identified the 4100 as the source of its delta T, or operating temperature information. And so if we want to affect the operating temperature of the OS3100, we're going to do that by changing the operating temperature of the OS4100. And the way we do that is by changing the range of the, um, the wavelength range or the bin width of the, the corresponding FBG. So let's go ahead and start by highlighting the OS3100 and, and see what these, um, I referred earlier to some color-coded cues to help us navigate the UI. Let's see what those are. When I click on the OS3100 sensor, let me click off it again and then click back on. First, when, when nothing is highlighted in the sensor table, you'll notice all of our FPGs are black, all of our channel indicators are black, and all of our uh, optical sensors are this sort of uh, orange color. When I click on the OS3100, all three of those things change. First, we see that our channel 3 has changed from black to blue, indicating that our OS3100 sensor has FPG elements present on channel 3. So that's the channel on which we should be focusing. If you had FBGs on multiple channels that were contributing to the value of the sensor, you would see multiple channels color-coded in blue where Todd indicated. Right. So there's nothing in NLight that requires that a strain sensor and a temperature compensation sensor be on the same fiber. So they could be on, on multiple, multiple channels. Also, now if we look in the, um, in the spectral bin window, we notice the two of our FBGs have changed color. Uh, first, the sensor FBG C3 has gone from the orange color to a blue color. That blue indicates that that is the primary sensor for the measurement for the OS3100. In this case, that's the strain sensing F FBG, and that shows up in blue. We see in this, this uh, light blue or this gray indicator, this is the temperature compensation element for the OS3100 macro sensor. And so if we want to affect either the operating temperature range or the strain range of the sensor, or both, these are the, these are the FPG elements that we want to modify. And, and by, by virtue of the fact that this is blue, this, this is how we're going to modify strain range. And uh, since this is gray, this is going to be our temperature compensation element. So, hmm? OK. And suggests we zoom in on those two sensors so we can see a little bit better. Okay, so again, here is our, and similarly, if, if you click on any FBG in the table, it will highlight that in the, um, in the graphic as well on the right. And if you click on any FBG in the table, it will highlight the sensors that are associated um, with that particular FBG. In our case, C3 is a component of our OS3100 strain sensor, and C5 is a component both of the 4100 temperature sensor as well as the 3100 strain sensor by virtue of the fact that it's using the 4100 for temperature compensation. So I'm going to go back and click on this uh, strain sensor again. And the first thing I'm going to do is increase the bin width for the strain sensing element to a much broader range. We see we have plenty of room on both sides with our system to increase the, uh, the wavelength allotment for this sensor. So I'm going to set this somewhere near plus or minus 1,500 microstrains, since that's what I expect to see on my system. So you'll notice that I'm doing that by, by grabbing and dragging the, uh, these dashed line uh, bin width indicators, which can be enabled and disabled with this button on the right. So when I grab that, that bin indicator, you see a couple things happen. First, obviously, the, uh, the dash line itself moves. Secondly, if you look back over at the FBG table, you'll notice that the max value on that table is changing along with the, uh, the graphic and, and the, uh, the spectral uh, graph that we're using. And third, and most importantly, perhaps, you'll notice down here on the range max for our OS3100, that by grabbing this, this bin indicator and dragging it, while we're really changing the wavelength that this FBG is going to be allowed to migrate, what our, what our eyes and our minds can, can feed back on is the range that we want to achieve. 
So here, uh, as I drag to the right, my max range is 1,200 microstrain, and I know I really want to achieve closer to 1,500 microstrain, and so I can continue increasing that bin width until we achieve the 1,500. So we know that our users are very interested in strains and temperatures, and so for configuring the system, uh, we really want that you're able to, to think in terms of uh, what strain range am I able to achieve? What operating temperature range am I able to achieve? But also be aware of the, the wavelength ranges required to achieve those measurement ranges. So here in a, in a, in a very clear uh, graphical way, we can see that in order to get to 1500, uh, we still have enough of a buffer between this FPG uh, and its neighbor. It's important to point out that it's not a simple, it's not necessarily simple to figure out what your range is going to be because of the temperature compensation element. And what InLight is doing under the covers is telling you what is the range of strains that you can measure, both positive and negative, regardless of what the temperature of the system is. Now, if you were to look at that expression um, and, and, and look at the range of all the values that it could have, it may very well, the min and the max may be larger than what InLight is showing. But what InLight is showing is the min and the max value regardless of where the temperature of the system lies. So it's taking out of, of, of the, the user no longer needs to worry if my temperature goes up, do I still have the amount of range that I need before my FBG crosses into other um, FBGs on my system and causes issues with the interrogator detecting it correctly. Mm -hmm. And um, further, we know that as the temperature goes up, both the wavelength of the strain uh, sensing element as well as the temperature compensation element, those increase in wavelength together. As the temperature goes down, they both go down in wavelength together. And so NLight um, is, is aware of that correlation and doesn't consider scenarios that can't really happen, such as the, uh, the, the temperature sensor going down in wavelength while the strain sensor goes up because of temperature. And that relationship is captured in this, this compensation um, control, where there's either no uh, correlation between the, um, the primary sensor and the compensation, or there's a positive or negative correlation. In our example, there's a positive correlation, and that correlation um, relationship is built into the sensor template and automatically populated when you create an OS 3100 with temperature compensation. So to further demonstrate the relationship between operating temperature and strain range, <clears throat> let's say that what we really want to do is measure over a range of uh, 2,000 microstrain, plus or minus 2,000 microstrain, and not 1,500. And uh, just to further demonstrate, let's see, let's, let's increase this range and try to achieve 2,000. And just for demonstration purposes, let's say that in order to do that, we have to cross bins with, the, with this adjacent neighbor. He said, well, what I really need to do is measure plus or minus 2,000 microstrain. And so, but now I know that I don't have enough wavelength range without encroaching on the next FBG to measure plus or minus 2,000 microstrain with an operating temperature range of plus or minus 35 degrees. So now, if we say we are not really going to see a delta T of plus 35 over the current temperature, we can reduce the operating temperature range to something lower. And so we really know we're only going to see plus or minus 20 degrees C. And so as I'm changing uh, the bin width for FBG C5, you see highlighted in the table, you'll notice that it's changing the range min and max for our 4100 sensor. It's also changing the relative T parameter for our OS 3100 sensor. So now I've got it to about plus or minus 20, and you can uh, use the buttons to fine tune. And the result of that action is that the same wavelength range that we had established for FBG C3, because we're using less of that wavelength range for the temperature migration of, of, of the uh, strain sensing sensor, more of that wavelength range can be used for detecting strain, and we can reduce that, that width
Oops. We can reduce that width down to something much smaller, and now we can achieve that 2,000 microstrain. So when we're establishing our sensor measurement system, it's very important to be aware of the range of operating temperatures that your sensors are going to see and the range of, of strains and displacements that you want to be able to measure and then to use the spectral bin controls through the, uh, the calibration expressions that are brought in by the, the templates to establish that the sensors are placed at, at adequate spacings and that we have the optical spectrum region for each sensor required to meet the measurement goal. In looking uh, and sort of one thing that in, in the details of all this that it, it, it can be a little bit easy to overlook is that in a matter of, of minutes using the sensor templates you're able to set up a temperature compensated strain measurement, adjust the range on the physical units that are of interest uh, to, to, the to the measurement all within a few clicks and a few minutes um, and have a system up and running that's reporting to you the strain over the temperature range that you need. Um, yeah, before this tool was established, it's a, uh, there was a lot of um, estimations of the required uh, temperature range and unfortunately uh, we had seen in the field and even in some of our own demonstrations that um, those rules of thumb can be very coarse and uh, without being able to run uh, the expressions um, with that positive correlation and, and the relationships to the bin and the delta T, it's very easy to make mistakes and either under or over provision spectrum uh, to where you risk uh, sensors colliding or have really underutilized the spectral budget that's available in, in the, uh, the interrogator full spectrum. One other comment I'd like to make is uh, on the templates before we go any further, the, the sensor templates are an XML-based text file. Uh, it's an open format, so it's something that you can create for your own if you don't see a template uh, for one of your sensors. It's, it's possible to open those up in Notepad or whatever your favorite text editor is, and you can uh, look at those, and you can create templates for, for just about any, any sensor that I've come across or that you can think of and then Enlight will read that in and allow you to utilize that to, to create that, that uh, sensor by, by another party.